was born and raised in the Detroit area on the other side of 8 Mile, about five miles from the city center, um, and also Craig, on a co-producer and co-cinematographer also from the area. So there was that, that started the, the whole conversation around the office of what to do next and what was happening to our hometown. Our parents both still live in the area and much of our family. And um, so that, there was, that was the initial impetus was a conversation that happened at the office uh, to make the film. And also, uh, I'm the daughter of a, a, a manufacturer. So my father had a family business um, that made parts for the auto industry. So I feel like I'm a daughter of American manufacturing in the sense that it put me through college. And I didn't realize what all of that meant when I, when I was growing up. But over the years, I've thought more and more about what's happening to our manufacturing base. So the combination of those interests really was the impetus. But once we went filming in October 2009, we brought our cameras there uh, just to see what we'd find just on a whim. We stayed with our parents, you know, brought, our, brought, brought Tony Hardman, our cinematographer, and we started filming, and we filmed for three days. And I have filmed all over the world, Saudi Arabia and Cuba and Malawi, etc. And it was not only the most cinematic place, uh, which I, it was under my nose all these years, but it was the most cinematic place I, I'd ever brought a camera, which was startling. And just the urgency of the way people spoke to us. There was a real urgency, and it didn't feel like a local story so much. We felt like something bigger. And so we basically decided there I would get back to New York. We cut together a little trailer, went to Sundance that year uh, with another film, and would finish screenings of 12th and Delaware, and we would start showing on an I iPod our trailer, and we raised the first $120,000 at the festival <laughs> to wow. start shooting. So we were very uh, ready to go. Detroiters uh, kind of had a wall around uh, initially just because there was a lot of people coming from the outside and, and doing pieces such as uh, the, the Nightline piece. Uh, uh, another local person came by and found the one person hunting raccoons and, and put that on as a story. Yeah, so the the low-hanging fruit had very, been Very much Thank so. And, yeah. and so um, it, it took a tremendous amount of time to build those relationships, especially with the mayor's office. Um, what, what you saw in the one scene was, was basically the result of six months of every single day checking in and hope hoping that we would actually get get access um, so um, you know I think that uh, Detroiters have seen the writing on the wall for a very long time and I think they were eager to tell the story but they wanted to make sure that you know we would do an appropriate job you know with with that there's this real insider outsider us versus them mentality is a real chip on the shoulder of Detroiters um, and and all there's also there's a lot more than that there's a lot of affection for their their city and so they, they were a funny bunch in terms of uh, subjects. Nobody was dying to be filmed. I mean, the best characters in documentary we found don't really care if you're there or not. And they're the best characters in documentaries are exactly the same if the camera is rolling or not. The same. And there's the new creative class that are, are just showing up, and there's the lifelong Detroiters. And, and those two populations are, are headed for a collision, I think. I th there's really no interaction between the two groups right now. Um, the people on the porch talking about urban farming and drop the tomato. I mean, they're talking, you know, th the urban farming is something talked about in the new uh, you know, arrival, you know, the, that community for the last two years. And a lot of Detroiters have been out of that conversation completely. And it, that scene just shows the disconnect, that, you know, something that's been widely talked about and they had, you know, no idea whatsoever. And, and you know, they live in the neighborhoods where the urban farming would take, you know, would actually take place. So I think that uh, Detroit, you know, with the, 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 the arrival of the new um, creative class is wonderful, but they're going to have to figure out a way to integrate um, in order to be obviously be any type of successful as a city as a whole. This is our contribution to, th there seems to be a real moment of national anxiety in the country right now. There's a lot of talk of, you know, is, is American exceptionalism true or false? Are we, uh, is, are we on decline or is the, is the decline inevitable? Uh, are we no longer great? Have we lost our edge? All of these questions that people seem that they want to talk about. I think if we'd made this film five years ago, um, it wouldn't be in release in 50 cities and, and this wouldn't be happening. I think that this is our contribution to this conversation, our cinematic contribution to a conversation about which way this country is going to uh, go forward. It's also, um, I hope that it's, um, uh, it reflects and reminds people the importance of having industry in this country. Um, and that we don't just have to keep mindlessly and blindly uh, selling, selling the store, you know. And I think that without corporate America coming to the table in some kind of, in a, in a real way, we couldn't even get any of the corporations that we spoke to in this film or that we profiled to speak to us at all. Uh, so that's a bad sign. I think there really needs to be uh, some, a collective conversation about how we're going to um, not just keep 
uh, pushing the middle class into the working poor and, and just keep farming all these jobs out. There's got to be a way these companies can continue to make a profit and not just remove all the jobs uh, because there's no industry or sector to replace them.